Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue talking about the standard template library and looking at the algorithms library. Today, we're going to be doing a rotate. Yes, famously said by Sean Parent, for those who know, everything is a rotate apparently. So what is it? Let's go ahead and dive in. All right. So anyways, jokes aside, let's go ahead and take a look at the algorithms library. Uh, and if you do want to see that Sean Parent talk, look for C++ seasonings famous talk many years ago about rotate. So anyways, we're going to go down to the modifying sequence operations and we'll go ahead and find rotate here. Let's see where it is. And there it is here. So it rotates the order of elements in a range. OK, so let's figure out what's going on here. And again, this is a modifying sequence operator here. And it looks like, uh, which is going to be a little bit new for some of the things we've looked at, but this takes three different forward iterators here. OK, so we'll work with something like a vector, something relatively familiar. But the idea of this is that we're going to have some data structure here. And let's go ahead and keep up CPV reference here. And again, we're taking in three parameters here. So rotate. And we need a first, middle, and a last element here. OK, now the key thing with rotate is if we just think about some sequence here, like one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and do five here. The idea is if I'm rotating something, I need to first pick a direction. Am I rotating things such that they're moving to the right or to the left? Well, in this case, let's go ahead and see what's on CPP reference. We perform a left rotation on the range of elements. So again, the, the way to think about this, because it might be a little bit uh, new for you, is perhaps to you know take a deck of cards like this here. And um, if you're like me, you carry a deck of cards with you for computer science and fun purposes. <laughs> but the idea is, let's say if we have five cards, doesn't really matter the order here. I'll go ahead and show them here <laughs> as you see my green screen breaking. Uh, but the idea is that I take cards here and I'm not going to lose anything here. OK, it's the same thing where you rotate where I might take one. And if I'm rotating to the left here, so towards the left side of the screen, well, that just puts it to the end here. OK, so I'm just sort of doing that rotation. So things are remaining in order. Now let's go ahead and do this perhaps with three cards so it's easy to see. I have my three cards here. And maybe I want to rotate two cards here. So I'm going to take these two cards. There's still my first one, my second one, and then my end one. These are the ones doing the rotate. And I'm going to move. Well, I can't move left anywhere, so I'm going to kind of stick them at the end here. OK, so that's the idea of the rotation. Now, that's maybe one intuitive way to think about it, or you can practice by laying out some cards here, but that's the idea of a left rotate, okay? Now, there's a few conditions here, such as um, if we're looking at our first, middle, and our last element here, um, if I, let's see, there's a few, uh, you know, barring, you know, trying to be too adversarial here and picking a uh, middle element that's before the first or something. Uh, basically, again, what this looks like, let's just do a simple example, is I choose my first element here. So maybe this is the beginning of my vector, for instance. And then I choose um, my middle element. And what's middle here? Well, that's the element that should appear at the beginning. OK, so, you know, let's go ahead and try something like V dot begin plus one. So what does that mean here? Let's let's again label these here first. Middle. And I'll go ahead and point an arrow up here. To element number two. So it's the element that should appear at the beginning of the rotated range. OK, so that means I'm not really doing anything with this one. I'm just rotating one here. OK, this is going to be my new start here. So I'll just kind of put a comment here. Uh, new start, you know, of uh, wherever I'm rotating, of wherever I'm rotating. OK. And then the end is the last of the original range. We're just going to go ahead and choose here for the end. Now, I could choose somewhere else here. Maybe we'll play around with this. Like I could choose three and then it's going to actually rotate one to this area here. But since we chose this as the end, we're going to take one here. And right, uh, let me draw this properly here, right? If I'm rotating to the left here, there, there's nowhere to go here. So I've got to wrap around to the end here. And now this is my new one value here. 
Okay, so that's the idea with rotate. Now let's go ahead and take a look at it in an example here. Um, and then we'll revisit the complexity and some of the other things here. Uh, but I want to go ahead and get this set up here. Uh, so again, I'm going to be working with a vector here uh, for this particular example. Um, and let's just call it V. I'll use a initializer list here. And I'm going to let it deduce the type for us because uh, modern C++ can do that. So I don't need to specify the uh, template argument, class template argument deduction. Uh, CTAD, um, you know, you could put that in. I'm going to leave this uh, brief here. Again, I just want to, you know, show some features every once in a while. Um, and let's actually print off this vector because we're going to want to see a few examples here. Okay, so I've got my vector library here and algorithm for our rotate here. Um, so let's just create a uh, lambda function here uh, for our uh, vector. And I should probably start doing this in more uh, videos here. Uh, let's just call this... Uh, C for the collection, whatever we're uh, printing off. And I'm actually going to put a message here, um, you know, just to help us write out what we're doing here. Message. Okay, and then we need a for each loop here. So for each of our elements, again, I'm going to assume these are integers or nothing crazy, so we don't need to, you know, pass by reference or anything uh, of that uh, nature here. Um, and let's put our collection here. And let's just write it out here. Uh, here, so we can see all of our code. And let's just write out that element here. Okay, and that'll do the trick. And then let's put a new line at the end here. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that out. Uh, and I'll just print out our vector here. Uh, and if any of this is confusing, uh, of course, feel free to check out any of the uh, videos on this playlist explaining lambdas and so on. Okay, so here's just a little lambda function. Uh, let's go ahead and compile that to see if I made any mistakes. Uh, of course I did. <laughs> let's see what uh, silly mistakes made. Semicolon here at the end of our lambda. Recompile. There we go. And if I run this before, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Um, let's just to make this a little bit more robust here. You always want to give yourself as much debugging as possible. Let's put a space here. Um, that should do the trick. Okay, so before one, two, three, four, five, we haven't really done anything with this vector. Now let's actually do our rotate. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Standard rotate. And again, uh, let's just kind of create this uh, example that we have up here. So again, my beginning uh, and then the start of my new range here uh, or where I'm rotating about and then the end here. And then we'll go ahead and print out uh, after uh, and I'll try to line these up here just so we can see what happened. And let's go ahead and give this a run or a compile rather and a run. And here we go. So two, which was our, well, that's the element that we're pointing to, right? That's unchanged. That's our new sort of start here. One was pushed left, but it had nowhere to go. So again, it's got to go all the way around to the very end here uh, at five here. Okay. So that's the idea here. So now we see two, three, four, five, and then one gets pushed off to the end. Now let's go ahead and try this if I say, okay, uh, I want to do a rotate of two. So now three is my new middle element here. Okay. And let's go ahead and compile that, run it just so you can see the difference. And now this time it's actually taking, uh, oops, I got to make sure I uh, save here. Let's go ahead and save here. Uh, I'll go ahead and run this here. Uh, oops, I guess it's only uh, printing off one. Uh, version. Oh yeah, I should I should do both of them. Actually, this is okay. Um, but yeah, so this time, you know, three is our new start, right? So again, just from our illustration, let's go ahead and update it with the current. So if I do plus two, right, then I'm pointing over here at three. That's my start. And then, well, I'm starting my rotation from the beginning here. So that's, you know, these first two elements. Okay, these first two here that I'm rotating and their ordering's not changing right one and two still follows so i can see that one and two now comes to the very end here okay so that's why we get three four uh five one two okay so hopefully that's making sense here um now let's go ahead and just play around with this a little bit more let's just do one element here and let's say we want to get our end here um but let's try you know minus one from the end here okay um now, quick question here. Let's go ahead and try this. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. Uh, well, I rotated uh, again. So before, one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, one, five. Okay, so this one's kind of interesting, and we I think we need a new uh, drawing for this. <laughs> but if I start with one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And here's my start 
here's what's going to be my new uh, new start here. New start or middle, as we're calling. And uh, I'll give middle another name in a second, uh, which is kind of interesting. But well, I'll just give it now. We can kind of think of it like our pivot point, right? What we're pivoting and rotating around. OK, um, again, if you uh, sort of imagine, you know, these elements hanging on a tree here to sort of our pivot point. And then on this you know, side, I've got one here. And this side, I've got three, four, five. OK, so this is rotating around to the end here. OK, so again, maybe that's another uh, visualization here. I'll move out of the way. Um, let me show you what I did here. All right, two, we draw one. And then on the other side, three, four, five. And then one comes at the end here. OK, so that's just another way you could kind of visualize things if it's useful. Um, all right. Um, so anyways, interestingly, our end right is here. But if we do minus one, that's actually four. So now when I'm rotating one here, uh, I'm moving it and sneaking it, you know, right in the middle here. OK, so that's how I get one, two, three or excuse me, <laughs> two, three, four, one, five. OK, so this is quite powerful of an operation as far as actually placing elements. And I've used some of these words that might be ringing bells in computer science, like pivot, for instance. OK, so let's go ahead and continue our uh, journey here through the rotate command here. Um, now, OK, there's a couple of different things here. Let's see on the return value for last. OK, if first is equal to middle, it's true. First, if middle is equal to last, true. Otherwise, uh, I mean, here's our like rotation here. First plus the last minus the middle. I mean, this is kind of interesting here. Um, you know, I remember as an interview question being asked to implement a uh, circular queue. <laughs> and if you've got a vector data structure, right, you can basically implement that with your queue, right, by just rotating elements around or uh, maybe keeping track of an iterator to one or the other, right? And you could use this um, data structure. It's kind of neat, right? Because a circular queue is just kind of rotating around. Anyway, something to think about. Uh, complexity, right? This is going to be linear. It's the distance between the first and the last. How many elements we have to sort of uh, shift around here? OK, um, let's see here. Here is some possible implementations. Again, kind of keeping track of our uh, boundary commissions uh, conditions here. So if first is equal to middle, return the last. Um, oh, I didn't uh, talk about the return value here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just telling you where this function also returns you an iterator that is to your new first element here. OK, let's actually just show that here. Let's try to capture it. Um, let's see here. So let's just create a um, new uh, or uh, what to call this here. Let's see how they uh, define this uh, new location. I'm just going to call it location. OK, and let's just go ahead and write it out uh, just so we can see where that prints to. I'll dereference the value. All right, let's see all of our code here. And if I go ahead and give this a run, OK, location uh, one here, right? This is the, the first thing uh, of the things that we are rotating. And we've got an iterator that's holding on to it, right? We might want to rotate it more or do something else, right, from that location and continue to move things along. Now, there's many different, I mean, applications of this. If you think about like um, graphical user interfaces, if you're like moving uh, lists of items around, you know, but but not deleting anything. That's a rotate, right? And that's the whole Sean Parent, you know, talk that he goes into. Uh, but the other really interesting thing that you know uh, Sean and others uh, showed and is in the documentation is here. You know, you can actually perform an insertion sort here with upper bound as well. So this one's a little bit of a mind bender in some sense when you first look at it, uh, and we haven't looked at upper bound, but this basically takes in. Uh, and this is part of the algorithm library, so it's not out of bounds for this video. Uh, but it takes in a uh, first iterator, the last thing that you're looking at, and then uh, a value here. And it's going to return an iterator pointing the first element in whatever this range is. OK, so we're just like looking through some numbers here, such that the value is less than uh, the element. Uh, and that condition is true. So that something is strictly greater. And you can kind of imagine how, since this is doing a comparison between a range of numbers, that, well, we're effectively doing like a less than check here, OK, like we would do in insertion sort. Uh, so let's just go ahead and try it out. Let's kind of write it out. Um, you can kind of think about it for a little bit if you want here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just comment this out. And let's do our insertion sort. Now we have to make things a little bit easier here. Um, 
or less sorted, I should say. So let's make this four, three, uh, one, two. Okay. Um, and then, well, we've got to look through every element, right? Insertion sort is a uh, n squared algorithm, potentially o of n, uh, I, should, I should say, though. And while we're not equal to the end, we're going to keep iterating forward. Okay, so just as we usually do here, just moving our iterator forward. And then we're going to perform a rotate within it here. Okay, so rotate and using this new upper bound function. So again, um, kind of need to dissect this one, I feel, a little bit more here. Uh, but what upper bound's doing is it's taking in, uh, well, where we're starting from, uh, the beginning of our range here, we begin, uh, and we're sort of extending that every time we look forward. Now, again, with insertion sort, right, once you know some set of values are sorted, right, this is why I have my deck of cards with me, right, where you're inserting things in the right order, you can move on, right? And that's that's the whole sort of point of uh, insertion sort. It's the card sorting algorithm here. Um, but anyways, we're going to compare uh, from our beginning to wherever we are in our uh, iterator here uh, to this value and make sure that it's strictly uh, less. And well, where do we rotate from? Well, this is our pivot point, right? Again, just like your deck of cards, I've got a card here, a card here, and a card here. And once I sort them, right? So let's say I move this um, you know, card here in front of this one. These two are sorted, right? Okay. And then we'll sort of propagate up as, as we need uh, doing our comparisons with these ones. And then I'll move this one here and I'll say, okay, I definitely know these two are sorted and this one's the largest one. Okay. Uh, so anyways, that's the point of what's going on in this algorithm. It's a good one to kind of dissect with um, rotate here. Um, but now if I print um, out our vector, I'm going to say sorted, uh, or hopefully, uh, hopefully it's sorted. <laughs> hopefully we didn't uh, make any mistakes here. Uh, so compile it, run it, and there you go. One, two, three, four, five here. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, insertion sort. And you can think about other algorithms, right, where you're pivoting around some sort of value here uh, and maybe how to sort things, okay, and how to break that problem up and so on. So uh, it's it's a rotate, right, and it's um, potentially happening, right, in place, uh, depending on, I guess, the implementation of this rotate here. Uh, so that could be quite nice here. All right. Um, so... The last example I'll comment on here is right below here. You might say, well, why are we rotating left all the time? And I want to rotate right. Again, this is the beauty in designing like iterators and thinking about computation um, in this way sometimes is, well, you could just get the reversed iterator <laughs> and sort of work uh, backwards here. Okay, so we don't need a like rotate left or rotate right. Those might be nice convenience functions actually for you to write um, once you get this uh, you know, properly set up. Um, but you know, that's, that's totally up to you. And again, you can always add abstraction on top of these, but the point is these algorithms are part of, uh, building blocks for you in C++ to implement whatever you need, even if that is an insertion sort. And I can tell you while this takes longer for me to think about, if I saw this in the code and I sort of say, oh, nice trick. Um, this is, you know, pretty clean. I, I sort of like having this, if I just need to whip up a quick insertion sort. If I need to optimize it or put in little, you know, special conditions to break early or whatever, sure, write your for loop or whatever. But um, I think this is just a nice um, way to think algorithmically um, uh, about the actual problem that you're solving. Alrighty, folks. So that's the famous rotate. <laughs> I've been looking forward to getting into this lesson with you folks here. Um, as always, you can track your progress here on uh, my webpage here, courses.mshaw.io, and keep track of your progress and see how many you know STL uh, algorithms you know by now. Hopefully, if you've been following and are subscribed, you've learned a bunch here. Uh, but anyways, hope you're enjoying. Thanks, as always, for your time and attention, folks. And yeah, let me know if you know cool use cases. Let me know if you've watched the famous Sean Parent video. Again, rotate's been around for a really long time, but but again, it's just a, uh, again, a fundamental way to think about computation. Some of you might have looked at things like uh, left shift or right shift operators and learning about that, thinking about things at the bit level. But now we can think about it as a building block in our algorithms library. All right, folks, thanks for your time and attention as always. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.